This is the best bait to cover water with during the fall. It is also one of the best bites that you can get on and it catches giant bass. Believe it or not, I actually used to hate fall time bass fishing. I felt like I could just never get on a consistent bite. But nowadays it has become one of my favorite times of year to fish. And I think it's because I just keep things really, really simple. And today I want to talk about the top five lures that I like to use in the fall. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. One of the best ways to help me bring more videos like this to you is by supporting the companies that support this channel. Not only has Sportsman's Outfitters backed Bass Fishing HQ for more than a year, but they have some of the best deals and prices on both fishing gear and hunting gear. So if you're looking for any tackle or equipment, click those links down below for Sportsman's Outfitters right now. Before I get into the lures, I just kind of want to explain a little something about fall time bass fishing that really just kind of clicked with me and just helped me to understand it a little bit better. Back in the day I used to get really frustrated because I would read articles about hey bass are in the backs of creeks and then I would try that and guess what I would catch some fish but it's not like I I, I cracked on them but then I'd go out and I'd fish the main lake and I'd I'd catch a fish out there so then I would be kind of separated between knowing what exactly to do and I just felt a little bit lost out there on the water and what I have found out over the years is that the number one way the most successful that I can be when it comes to fall fishing is by actually not trying to find a pattern. It's by really just covering a lot of water and understanding that there are going to be some areas that have a lot of fish, but for the most part, bass can be pretty much anywhere during the fall. They can be out deep, they can be up shallow, they can be everywhere in between. So catching a fish shallow here, catching a fish deep there, catching a fish in between is really what fall fishing is all about. Now there are a few patterns that tend to develop later in the fall when that water starts really getting into the the low 60s in the 50s and that is what we'll talk about a little bit here but for the most part fall fishing is really all about covering water and just understanding that you might have days where you catch five fish on five different baits now speaking of five lures let's jump into the lures that i like in the fall so the first lure the one that i pick up most of the time in the fall is a spinner bait. Now, if you have watched some of my other videos on this channel, you know that I will actually typically start picking a spinner bait up in the month of September, but I will fish this throughout the entire fall. And I think that the later into fall that you get, the better this spinner bait bite gets. You know, a lot of fish will feed heavily at the end of the year on bigger threadfin shad, bigger gizzard shad, or whatever bait fish is in the body of water that you're fishing. And one of the best ways to catch a big fish late in the year is with a spinner bait. This is one of the times of the year where those big fish will start to move shallow, especially late fall. And if you concentrate around wood or rock cover with a spinner bait, you can catch some giants on it. Now, this is the exact spinner bait that I like to fish a lot. This is a Booyah Covert. It's a Jason Christie spinner bait. I like the half ounce. I pretty much just throw this bait. And as you can see here, I actually don't have a trailer hook on the bait at all. I just like to thread on on a piece of plastic. The piece of plastic that I like is this one right here. This is a Zoom Fat Albert. And the reason that I don't like a trailer hook is because I will put this bait into some pretty gnarly cover during the fall. A lot of wood cover, wood lay downs, falling down trees, bushes, anything that I can. So I really don't like to have that trailer hook because you're going to get hung on that cover with that trailer hook a lot. Now putting that plastic on there, what it basically does is it gives the bass something to suck in. When they open their mouth, they create negative pressure. And so that water that flows into their mouth needs to grab onto something. And so adding that plastic it really allows that bait to draw into that fish's mouth where you get him with that main hook. Now, it's really important to know that you can catch bass on spinner baits and all different water clarities, but I do tend to like more stained water 
during the fall. Now, moving on to the second bait, it kind of plays off of this spinner bait because what I've seen in the fall time is there are days where I'm out there and I'm throwing the spinner bait and you will get these like whoosh bites where it's like you bring it past the log and you just feel the spinner bait get knocked to the side or where you just feel like a whoosh. Like it's, it, it almost pulls you down and lets go. You set the hook, you miss that fish. And it just seems like there are days where the spinner bait might be a little bit too much for the bass. And, and I think that this can happen sometimes in, in, in clearer water as well. And anytime that I'm having those type of bites where it's kind of that whoosh bite where he doesn't quite get it, that is when I like to pick up a square bill crankbait. I think that this square bill crankbait is very similar to the spinnerbait. I fish it in a lot of the exact same areas. I mean, rock banks, riprap banks, any type of wood, lay down cover, muddier water. But the thing about a crankbait is that it has treble hooks. So if the bass just tend to be a little bit gun shy on that spinnerbait, I will pick up a square bill. Now, there are a few things that I think help me to get a few more bites with a square bill in the fall. And one is actually the color of the bait. As you can see here, I am throwing a chartreuse black bass back square bill. This is the one that I pick up probably 95% of the time in the fall. And the biggest reason is that in the fall, you have a ton of bait fish in the water. You have a ton of young of the year shad that are all about this exact same size. And so I think what a lot of guys do is they tend to pick up a shad colored crankbait because that's what we're taught, right? To match the hatch. But Sometimes I feel like you can actually blend in too well with the hatch. So sometimes I think going against the hatch actually helps you to catch more bass. And that is why I like chartreuse because I think that while other guys are throwing a shad pattern, chrome or white crankbait, I'm not saying that that's not going to catch fish. I think that that chartreuse just kind of helps that bait to stand out a little bit to a bass, enough that he might bite your bait more than other guys. This one right here is probably my favorite. It's a very consistent bait. This is a Strike King 1.5. Now, the other thing that is really big is sound. You have square bills that have no sound like this one, and you have this actually exact same square bill that actually comes with a lot of sound, a lot of rattle. And this is huge, guys. In bass fishing, there are days where bass really like something that is silent and subtle, no rattles, and there are days where bass like a lot of noise, a lot of sound. Now, typically, if I'm fishing in really loud conditions, if it's really windy out, maybe you have really muddy water, that's when I tend to pick up a bait that has rattles, something that also is really loud and helps bass to hone in on it. But that's not always true. I have just found that there are days where you do not want too much. You do not want to overpower the fish. And that is when I pick up a silent bait like this one right here. Now we have talked a lot about catching bass around rock and wood situations, but something that happens in the fall is a really almost magical grass bite. And this actually brings me to lure number three, which is a lipless crankbait. During the fall, you're going to see a lot of the grass in your bodies of water start to die off. You're gonna have grass that was once really green and crispy and great looking start to kind of turn a brown color. With that being said, there are going to be sections of grass that remain green and crispy for longer than any other grass patches by. And it seems like all of those fish actually go right to where that greenest, crispiest, best grass patch is. And like I said, you can almost find a really magical fall time bite where a lot of bass get loaded up on really small grass patches. Now the key is what I just talked about. You gotta find grass that looks good. It's really healthy looking. It's really green in color. It's really crispy. You do not want that brownish colored plant or reddish colored plant that breaks off really easily. Now the hard part about that is that you can kind of dial in your electronics to be able to tell whether that grass is really healthy and clean or whether it's kind of dead and decaying, but it is very hard 
to see that. So actually one of the best ways to actually figure this out is by fishing a lipless crankbait. Not only does it catch bass, but it also helps you to feel that grass. So I'm gonna cast them out, I'm gonna rip them through that grass, I'm gonna rip it out of the grass, let it sink, and you're going to find that there are certain little areas, little sections, where you run into that green, crispy grass. And usually, as soon as you start hitting that green, crispy grass, you start catching bass. So again, I like to keep things really, really simple. If I am fishing around grass, whether that's an eight foot of water or three foot of water, I am going to pick up a lipless crankbait. Now these are a couple of my favorite ones here. This is an Arc Z63 crankbait, and then this is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. Now, one of my favorite colors is actually gold during the fall. I use gold on my spinnerbait blades. I will also use gold on my lipless crankbait. And to me, it's kind of like that chartreuse of a square bill. It's something that just stands out a little bit. If those fish are seeing a lot of shad or silver flashes down there, and then they see something golden color, I just feel like I catch a lot of fish on gold. And when they get it, they get it. Now, one other quick pattern that I see develop with a lipless crankbait in the fall is that on the backs of some creeks, depending on the water that you're fishing, in the backs of some creeks, you will have these mud flats. Bass will actually push bait fish onto these mud flats and they will school on them on these mud flats. Now these flats might be in three or four foot of water and one of the best ways to catch them is by yo-yoing and pumping a lipless crankbait through those mud flats. Now with those first three lures, as you can see there, I fish a lot of moving baits during the fall. And like I talked about, the reason I fish moving baits is because I know that I'm gonna catch a fish here and a fish there for the most part. So the more water that I feel like I can cover, the better opportunity and the more fish that I feel like I'm going to catch. Now there is definitely a time and a place to slow down because sometimes you do find a creek arm that just has a lot of fish. And if there's a lot of wood laydowns in that area, I am going to pick up a simple jig and just start flipping it into those lay down. More than likely, you could pick up a Texas rig and catch these same fish, but I just feel that I catch a lot of big bass on a jig during the fall. Once that water temperature starts to get cold, it just there's just something about a jig that bass really, really like. Now, not only will I flip this bait into lay downs, but one of my favorite all-time bites of all during fall, especially late, late fall, is actually fishing creek channel swing bank. These are places where the old creek channel actually swings up and hits the bank. It's a very steep bank and the bass in late fall will get on those banks. I really like to cast my bait up there shallow and work it all the way out to deeper water. And what you, a lot of times you'll find is a, a little brush pile or a little stump that a bass is sitting on on that creek channel swing. It's a great technique to again catch really, really big bass in the fall. Now, two jigs that I always recommend to people is the Strike King Structure Jig. The reason that I like this is it was meant for structure, but you can fish it through a lot of cover as well. This bait also skips really, really well, so you can skip it underneath of a dock, underneath of an overhanging tree. The other jig that I like is a Freedom Tackle Jig. One of the biggest things that I like about this jig is not only does it have quality components, but it actually says on the back of the jig how much it weighs. So I know that this one weighs a half ounce, and you might be thinking, well, you get them out of a package, you know how much they weigh, but by the time I put everything into a box, a lot of times I forget. And so having it say how much it weighs, it's just something that's really, really Really nice to have. All right, I have saved my very favorite lure, my very favorite fall lure for last, and it is one that is just really, really special to me. This is the best bait to cover water with during the fall. It is also one of the best bites that you can get on in the fall, and it catches giant bass in the fall, and that is a buzz bait. If you guys have not thrown a buzz bait in the fall, I'm telling you, this is something that you need to do. This is truly one of the best times of year to catch some of the biggest bass that you will catch all year long on a buzz bait. And something that I think a lot of guys don't know is that you can fish a buzz bait in extremely cold water. And I've said this a hundred times on this channel before, but I have caught fish on buzz baits in 47 degree water temperatures. 47. That is really, really cold. I know that it gets a lot colder than that, but 47 degree water 
is pretty dang cold and you can still catch fish on a buzz bait in that cold water. Now the big thing that you want to do when you're fishing cold water buzz baits is make sure you pick up one that has a big blade on it. The big blade really allows you to creep that bait across the surface and that is what I find to be the best way to catch bass on a buzz bait. Cast it out and barely creep it across the surface. I want to keep this going fast enough to keep it on the surface but as slow as I can. Now if you guys want to see me fish this exact buzz bait right here you can actually click on this video right here why fish this exact buzz bait and go out and catch some fall time bass so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up comment below and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video